One way that you might use percents in real life is by calculating interest. How much interest you earned on something in the bank or how much interest you have to pay on a loan that you take. That's what this last lesson of pre-algebra chapter 6 is going to be about. So as I just said, interest is an amount of money that you either have to pay extra or you earn because you use money by the bank or you put money in the bank. The starting amount of money that you work with is called the principal. The rate means like what percent are they going to give you and the time is how long it was there. You are lucky because you go to Prairie Trail Middle School, and so this formula should be easy for you to remember. The interest, which is what this I stands for, is equal to PRT. So that should be quick and easy for you to remember because of your school. That P stands for principal. Please note that the interest and the principal will both be in money. So you're going to have to pay close attention. Is it talking about the starting amount of money? If so, that's the principal. Or is it the extra money you have to pay or the extra money you earn later? And if so, that's the interest. And then the R stands for rate. We're going to look at annual interest rates, which means each year. And so your rate is always going to be in a percent. And then the time is what the T stands for. And for our purposes, since we're talking about annual interest, we're going to be talking about years. But you could be talking about monthly interest if you wanted, whatever. Just know that in our problems, we're going to be talking about years. Always remember what we told you back in Lesson 6-3 when we learned our percent equations. When you use a percent inside of an equation, you have to go back two spots to make it decimal form. That is always true, and so we're going to follow that rule here today as well. So interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. You should know that from way back in chapter one and even from last year that when your variables are connected that means multiply. All right let's see this in action. Example one says Ken borrowed money for four years at an interest rate of six percent. Well here I see years so I know this is going to be my t my time. Here this is the percent sign so I know that goes with the rate. He owes $540 in interest, so that money is going to be the I, this was the R, and how much did he borrow? So the P is the question, the P is the part we don't know. So let's write our formula, I equals PRT, and let's substitute in the values we do know. We do know that the I, the interest, was $540 equals the P, the principal, we do not know, times the rate, which was 6%, but when I take my decimal and two spaces left, I know that I'm going to write it as 0 0.06 in the equation, and then multiply it times the T, which was years, which is 4. Okay, well I can't multiply the P by the 0 0.06 and the 4, but I can multiply those two numbers to get 24 hundredths, or 0.24, and I know if I'm multiplying an extra variable with it, I just put it at the end, and then I'm going to bring down what I haven't used yet. So 540 is equal to 24 hundredths times P. Well, to get P by itself, I want to do the opposite, so I want to divide both sides by 24 hundredths. Yes, you're allowed to type that in your calculator. And when you do that, you will get 2250, which means if I'm going to write my sentence here, Ken borrowed... $2,250. That was his original amount that he started with, his principal. All right, let's look at example two. Carly had $2,500 in her savings account. If she earned $506.25 in interest after three years, what was her interest rate? Well, let's break it down and look at the pieces. She had $2,500 in her savings account already. So that's her P, her principal, her starting amount. If she earned $506.25 in interest, which means that's going to be my I, after three years, so that's my time, what was her interest rate? Question mark. So the R is the part I do not know. All right, let's write our formula. I equals PRT. I, interest, 
they told us that that was $506.25 equals, this time I can fill in my P, my principal. I know that that's 2,500 times the R, we do not know. We don't know the interest rate, so I'm leaving that there. Times the T, which is three. Well, I cannot multiply them in order, but I can use my commutative property to switch these two around so that I can just multiply the 2,500 times the three. And when I do that, I get 7,500. And then I'll hook the R right on to show that that still needs to be multiplied. And I'm going to bring down the $506.25 because it's on the other side of the equal sign. The R is being multiplied by 7,500. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7,500. And when I type that in my calculator, I get 0 0.0675. Now that is a decimal. I want my rate, as I told you in the top of the notes, to always be a percent. So I'm going to move that decimal two spaces to the right to make it a percent. And then my sentence will say, Carly's interest rate was 6.75%, or a little bit less than 7%. Hopefully that's making sense to you, how we substitute in the numbers. Let's do one more together, and then I'll have you try number four on your own. Number three says, Edward took out a $1,000 loan. His interest rate is 4.5%, and he will pay off the loan in two years. How much will he owe in interest? Well, let's see. He took out a $1,000 loan, which means that's the principal. That's the amount that he's starting with. His interest rate is 4.5%. Since it's percent, I know it's rate, and it has the rate there. So I'm going to give myself a reminder that for the R... I'm going to do 0 0.045 because I had to move that decimal two spaces to the left to get it from percent form to decimal form. And he will pay off the loan into years. Since we're talking about years, I know that that's my time. How much will he owe in interest with the question mark, which means the I is the part we don't know yet. If I write down my formula, that shows me that it's the beginning part before the equal sign that's going to have to stay a variable this time, the I, I don't know. The principal I can show is 1,000 times the rate of 0 0.045, because I'm using decimal form, times the time of 2. Well, look at that. This time we have three numbers being multiplied together. We have the variable already by itself, so we're not going to have to divide on both sides. So then if I do 1,000 times 0 0.045 times 2, then I see on my calculator I get 90. So to write my sentence, Edward owes $90 in interest. Up above, we talked about earning interest, where if you leave money in the bank and you allow the bank to use your money and give it in loans to other customers, then they give you a thank you by paying you interest. But if they loan you money and let you use their money for a while to buy a car, to buy a house, or to pay for college or something like that, then not only do you pay them back all the money you borrowed, so in this case, Edward will pay them back $1,000, and he'll pay them as an extra $90 as a reward to them for loaning him their money. So then altogether he has to pay them back $1,090. All right, let's see if you can figure out the pieces of example four, where they belong in the formula. Try working it out and solving. Push pause on the video while you're doing all that and then come back and check yourself. Hopefully you saw that opening with $4,000 means $4,000 was the principal. The rate was 4.25%, so when I used it as decimal form, it was 0 0.0425. The question asks, how many years? We don't know it, so it means T is the variable part I cannot fill in. And it says she earns $170 in interest, so that's my I. So I substituted those numbers in for each of the variables that I just described. T was left open at the end. I multiplied the numbers that I could and then hooked T onto it to show that it would all be multiplied. Then since the T was multiplied by 170, I had to divide both sides by 170, and hopefully you can see that that was 1 without needing a calculator on that part. So that means my sentence is, Amanda earns $170 in just one year. That's pretty good, huh? 
All right, if you have confusion on any of these problems, please mark them down so you can ask for help before starting your own assignment. If you got them right, good job. If you missed this last you try problem, please make sure right now to actually correct it so you have correct examples all to look at in class tomorrow instead of an incorrect example that might confuse you.